Fixing the Money Thing. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Drenda Cassie. Welcome to the program. Do you remember back in Sunday school when you read about Jericho and the walls that fell down? Well, do you know the most important part of that story is not that the walls fell down, it's what came afterward, right, Gary? It's exactly what right. What happened afterward? Well, that's a obviously a familiar story we heard in Sunday school, but the point that actually was the point was never made. Mm. It never was made when I learned it anyway. Right. I, the walls come tumbling down was the part that I remember, right? Right. They let out a shout. The walls yeah. came down. And there's a little song they sing with that, yes. I think, you know. But, <laughs> but what uh, happened next? Well, the bottom line was, is the point, not the walls. The walls were a hindrance to the point. The walls were what was trying to stop what was supposed to happen. And that was they were to take the city. In fact, let's go back to Joshua and just take a quick look at that scripture. In the sixth chapter of Joshua, verse 2, it says this, The Lord said to Joshua, See, I like how he said that. See, uh, you know, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. Well, the walls are still standing when he said that. I have given you Jericho along with its king, the authority of the city, and its fighting men, the defense. He said, march around the city, he gives the instruction of marching around the city, of course, you know, the seventh time, and they blow the trumpets. And uh, when the trumpets sounded, the army shouted at the sound of the trumpet. When the, man, the men gave a loud shout, the walls, walls came down. Came down. <laughs> yes. But you have to finish the sentence. So everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. Mm. Now, if you remember right, when they crossed the Jordan River, Jericho was the first city they came to. God had given specific instruction that the wealth of that city, taking that city, would go into the treasury, mm. not into the men's hands, into the treasury. It was a type of tithe, if wow. you will. And so that, what was in the city, they were going to take the city, and they are going to take what was in the city and occupy it. Now, this mm. is an important word. Occupy means that city changes legal jurisdiction. It comes under Israel's army. It comes under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of God at that point, right? That's great. And so the objective was not to knock the walls down. The objective was to take the city. Yes, I like that word charge, to yes. charge yes. the city and take it. That's yeah. good. I mean, that's a word that we all need to hear because so many times believers are taught to be passive and not to actually right. go take something. Exactly. And here's why, and this is the point of I want to make today is, as you said, passive. Most believers tend to view, this, view our walk in this life as defensive against the enemy, not offensive. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says this in Matthew 16, a very important point. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, gates are protective. Mm -hmm. They are not offensive. See, Jesus stripped the enemy of any armor, any protection. He has stripped him of authority, right? Right. We are on the offense, but most Christians view their walk with God as defensive. In the name of Jesus, you know, they're going to stop the devil. They're... See, most Christians think they've won the victory when they stop the devil from killing, stealing, and destroying. That is not the victory. That's the wall. Hmm. See, the wall... Let's talk about someone who's an addict, okay? The addiction, being delivered from that addiction is not the victory. It is a victory. Correct. It's not the victory. Right. The victory is the destiny that that person has in the kingdom. Yes. The addiction is simply stopping the person from discovering and fulfilling their Their destiny. vision and destiny for their life. So that God when has. we come against the enemy's strongholds, the walls are down, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. We, we deliver people out of the strongholds of the enemy for a purpose. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they came across the Red Sea. That was a mighty act of deliverance, correct? Correct. It seems like most people in the church world love to celebrate the Red Sea deliverance. Mm -hmm. But what they don't remember is, is that they left Egypt to go somewhere. Yes, 
So God has delivered you from something to take you to exactly. something. Exactly. Not just to be, oh, I'm delivered. Exactly. Now I just exist. But no, I've been delivered from this so I can go to my destiny and do it. God that is exactly has called right. me to do. And debt's the same way. Debt holds people back That's right. from fulfilling their destiny. All kinds of things can set up walls and barriers in exactly. our life of course. to keep us from fulfilling what God has for us. So when we give a shout, we know the word of God, the mm -hmm. walls come down. But this is about what do we do once we've got the walls down, right? Well, the Bible says in John 10, 10, Dren, that a thief comes to steal, steal kill, kill, and destroy, destroy, okay? And so that's what people tend to, in the name of Jesus, you know, uh, stand against Satan. And that is important. That is important. Deliverance is important. Yes. But we are never uh, designed to stay at deliverance. Correct. But they have to read the rest of the sentence. John 10, 10. But thief I comes can. to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give them abundant life. Yes. So there's life after deliverance. Yes, yes. Okay? But as I said, most Christians view their, their, uh, their stance against the enemy as their success. I like what you said. It's defensive posturing. Defensive posture. Instead posturing. of thinking, you know, and a team that never takes a shot can never have a victory or can never get, well, can yeah. never score. Yeah. So if you never shoot, exactly. you never win. But on this team... The church seems like they don't know to even take a shot. Mm. They're, they spend their celebration time. In other words, again, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Right, it is right. a celebration when someone is coming out of debt or delivered right. from addiction or whatever is holding them hostage. That is a celebration. Yes. But if you don't teach them that their destiny is to occupy. See, destiny is always a place. Mm. Destiny is a place of occupation. And so God has a place where he has designed you specifically. You, you have gifts, talents, unique abilities. God is taking you someplace yes. where you can, uh, you remember the old uh, climbing the mountain and putting the stake in. I take this territory for, you know, <laughs> whatever government. <laughs> yes. We are to go and take territory and occupy it. That means bring it under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of God yes. on behalf of the kingdom of God. And occupy means you take dominion over that territory mm on behalf of the kingdom, and you administrate that occupation on behalf of the kingdom. That's good. But again, most people, most believers read that scripture about the gates of, of hell as a victory in the sense that they feel like Satan, those gates are stopping them from succeeding. They're, you know, they have this view that Satan has the power to stop them from succeeding when really you have the, th you have the authority. We have the offense. Mm. Satan has no legal jurisdiction here. Jesus has stripped him of his authority completely. All right. So we've got to let go of the, mount, the mindset, just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away. Oh, that's ridiculous. That's the attitude that says, I'm just, I'm just barely here. That's I'm just ridiculous. hanging on. It, it's a matter of going into battle and having victory, right? Exactly. We bind the enemy. The walls are down. But now we've got to march on in there and take the city. Charge in there. So remember this. The walls tumbling at Jericho was not the victory. The walls were the hindrance. The victory was, what's the assignment? Hmm. Take the city. Occupy it. Bring it under the dominion or jurisdiction of the kingdom of God. That's great. And it brought Every the person. treasure then into the kingdom right. of God. And so when people go out and they occupy, they take territory, whether it's in their business, their life, their family, ministry. The early people in our nation started hospitals and churches and schools take and territory. did all of these amazing things. They had a new nation, but they had to go and occupy that nation and set up. You have to. And, yeah. and it's a good example to me of just, we can't just sit back and be passive. Passivity will actually let the enemy encroach in every area of our lives. Exactly. I mean, God has given us the directive. He gave the church to not sit, but he said, go. Hmm. He said, go and preach the gospel, right? And he right. gave them offensive direction, an off offensive, that's not offensive right. uh, uh, mandate, if you will, yes. to go set the captives free. The battle's done. The walls are down. So this is the key. The walls are down. But as I said, it seems that most churches, if you hear the songs they sing and what they talk about, is about trying to get deliverance. They're mm -hmm. stuck on the Red Sea. They're stuck on trying to get that enemy off their back. And there's a promise to get to a promise land. There's a land. promise and authority. Mm -hmm. To, to enact that, that's already been finished. We have the authority. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. 
Visit GaryKC.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.